Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Osterberg501, and today I want to go over the top five upcoming MMO RPGs. And I do also have a MMO focused channel that will be focused on long term coverage of all the MMOs that I like playing. So go subscribe to that if you're interested in seeing content fully focused on MMOs. Now, this list won't be in any specific order. I'm just very excited and interested in all of these MMOs. Now first we have New World, which is the closest to release MMO on this list. It's an open world MMORPG developed by Amazon Games that recently ended its closed beta test and it will be fully launching on August 31st of 2021. And New World's combat system is more akin to something like Dark Souls than the more tab target style of MMO combat. Now with that being said, I I don't think the combat is in the same league of Dark Souls, but the dodging, attack timing, getting more punished for just spamming is still something the combat is trying to achieve. And the main combat progression is within their weapon system, so there are no classes in New World, but there are a bunch of different weapon types, so something like a great axe, a sword and shield, a hatchet, where using these weapons will level them up, and every weapon has two skill trees that have three abilities in each skill tree. And and a bunch of other passives scattered around. So using the weapons you like to use will level up those weapons and make you better with those weapons. And New World is focused on having a mix of more theme park PvE content and more community focused PvP content and control of zones and towns with a overarching heavy focus on gathering and crafting. You can actually gather pretty much every tree, every bush, and every rock you come across. And crafting will allow you to craft some of the best gear in the game that will be on par with the best PvE and and PvP weapons and armor. The game has a very heavy community focus where you join one of three factions and then the companies that you join, which are guilds, will then fight for those factions to invade and control different zones and towns in the game that culminate on either attacking or defending own settlements in a 50v50 instanced battle where the winner takes or keeps control of that settlement, which are essentially the towns and cities of the game. Putting a big focus on coordinating with your faction and the different companies in that faction to be able to control as much of the map as possible at any given time. But the game is moving more towards being a more theme park PvE focused game with a bigger main quest line with voice acted quests, adding in expeditions or five player PvE dungeons, making the game more of a holy trinity system where you'll have tanks, DPS, and healers, and allowing you to opt in or out of open world PvP. New World is overall looking to have a very good foundation to build up a very successful MMO from. Next up on the list, we have Crimson Desert, which is being developed by Pearl Abyss and shares a universe with Black Desert Online. And this game was recently delayed and currently has no release date. Now, Crimson Desert may or may not fit into the mold of what most people think as MMOs. When it was first announced, when there was first a trailer released, it was pitched as and said to be an MMO that has more focus on story content and would be a more westernized version of BDO. But since then, there have been interviews that have kind of walked back that MMO name. If you go to the website of the game or look at the trailers now, it is no longer being called an MMO. But I've also read some interviews that the developers are kind of vague and don't walk back the MMO title as much. And we do know there will still be a multiplayer portion of the game. It's seeming more like it's going to be something kind of akin to an MMO light, something like Destiny or something like Warframe, where you have your more single player mode where you're doing your main campaign, main quest, and main story content. And then you can switch to a multiplayer mode and explore the world world with them and do whatever content ends up being in the game. 
Crimson Desert will be following the same style of combat as BDO, but it will be an updated and upgraded version, which is a very good thing. The combat in BDO is one of its strongest points. It is going to have a much bigger focus on story content and telling a full story. It's going to be a little bit more focused towards a Western audience, so it feels more natural for a Western audience. A lot of it seems to be more towards a Viking aura and aesthetic, but they have said what some of the stuff in the multiplayer version will entail. They have mentioned that there will be a lot of the systems from BDO in the game. Most people think this is pointing to Crimson Desert still having the life system that BDO has, which is one of the most popular parts of the game. The cooking, the fishing, the mount training, the caravan transport, and all the other life skills that are in BDO. But we don't have much information past what I just went over, but I am still excited for this game and interested to see what MMO style content is in the game on release. Next up at number three, we have Core Punk, which is an open world MMORPG with an isometric or top down point of view. It was very recently delayed, so we will be getting the closed beta test in December of 2021. And even though it doesn't have an official release date, if everything goes to plan, the game will probably be released very early in 2022. And Core Punk will be a much more unique game for a lot of people because the combat is built very similar to a lot of MOBAs. So think something like League of Legends, it has that top-down point of view. The classes are also built very similar to a lot of MOBAs. You'll have your passive or your special ability that synergizes with all of your other abilities, and then you'll have your three main active abilities, and then an ultimate ability that will usually be much stronger, but have a much longer cooldown. And if you go on the Core Punk website, you can actually see six of the classes and all of their different weapon masteries which are specs in core punk and you can see all of their abilities their specials their passives and even with how they're laying out the cooldowns the mana costs and the damage numbers of the abilities is the exact same way that something like league of legends or other mobas lay out their character abilities and statting and core punk has a pretty big focus on its massive open world and theme park elements it'll have all all the systems you're accustomed to from other theme parks such as World of Warcraft, you have mounts you can collect, you have achievements, you have instant dungeons and raids, and even randomly generated dungeons. You have your holy trinity combat style, so you have your tanks, your damage, and your supports or healers. You'll have world bosses, wandering bosses on the PvE side with the dungeons and raids. Then on the PvP side, you'll have the open world PvP that you can opt into so you can fight anybody anywhere and then you have instance battlegrounds and arenas and you have a class system that is very familiar with a lot of other mmos you'll choose one of the classes but then every class will have three different weapon masteries that have their own skill trees their own passive trees they use different weapons and they all have completely different abilities and passives so there is a lot of character customization depending on which class class and then which weapon mastery you choose. And there are a lot more systems and content in Core Punk, but that is a good overview to give you an idea of one of the more unique MMOs coming in the near future. And next up, we have an MMO that is pretty much a guaranteed chance to be very successful. And this is going to be Lost Ark. And Lost Ark is a MMO ARPG with a top-down point of view that is more similar to a Diablo style of combat in an MMO. And this MMO was actually released three years ago in Korea and is currently the most popular MMO in that region and currently has a release date for the West of fall 2021. And there's a possibility that its release date was leaked to be in October of 2021. And Lost Ark had an alpha test not too long ago that you were able to write reviews of the alpha test on Steam. And on Steam, it currently has over 1,000 
and reviews with a 97% positive rating, which is pretty rare on Steam, giving this game even a bigger chance of just being ultra successful when it fully releases. And on the release of the Western version of the game, there will be a total of 15 classes to choose from, and there will most likely be many more added in the months after release, as the game is catching up to the content releases of the game in other regions. And with Lost Ark being released for three years in Korea, the game is going to have a massive amount of content, even with the game not being caught up to the Korean version of the game. There will be the full main story questline you go through to level up. There will be tons of stuff to collect in every zone and every continent of the game. There's a massive amount of different end game content and systems. There's ranked arenas. There's larger open world PVP events. There's mounts and pets to collect. There is a player housing system that you can customize and do much more with. And there's even sailing in the game where you can take your own ship, hire different NPCs for it, and participate in open world content in the seas of the game. On the PvE side of the endgame, you have a lot of content to look forward to, from harder and harder solo dungeons, to group dungeons, to 8 and 16 player raids, to a boss rush mode, to world bosses, and much more. Then on the PvP side, you mainly have unranked and ranked arenas that are standardized stats, so you don't have to worry about gearing up for this. You just go in there and your skill is the decider if you win matches or not. Then they have some other more large scale PvP events where there's a lot more players fighting each other. Lost Ark is probably the game I'm most excited for on this list because it has so much content from being released for years in other regions. It has very, very good reviews. The combat is considered to be incredibly well done and incredibly polished. There's a massive amount of content. It's extremely successful in other regions, and it is said to be one of the best cared for MMOs in the world. And the last MMO I have on this list is Ashes of Creation, and I want to leave this one for last because it is by far the most ambitious MMO on this list, but it is also the furthest from release and is currently only in Alpha 1 and does not have a release date and most likely won't be released for at least a couple years. Ashes of Creation is an open world sand park MMO RPG that has a major focus on community and feeling like an MMO and needing to rely on other players for completing content, gearing up, getting resources, and anything else you can think of. And Ashes is trying to strike a balance between sandbox systems and theme park style of content. Its combat system will be a mix of tab target and action combat. And if they're able to get this combat system right, they want you to be able to always have a mix of these, but be able to choose if you want to go more into tab targeting or more into action combat and be able to have a choice between these with the majority of the abilities and skills in the game. Now, one of the most unique and defining features of Ashes of Creation is the node system. And essentially, the entire map of Ashes of Creation will be split into different nodes and that node's area of influence. So think of them like a node would be its own zone. And when players Players are gathering resources, killing enemies, completing quests in the zone of influence for a node, that node will be gaining that XP as well and leveling up. There are five stages of a node, which starts as a crossroads, goes up to villages, towns, and ends at metropolis, essentially allowing players to choose what areas are going to be built up, making every server completely unique. And players will be able to become citizens of these nodes, they'll be able to buy housing and apartments, players will elect mayors once the nodes level up to certain points, and the mayors can then choose what buildings or where to put their resources, and then nodes will be able to declare war on other nodes, and players will have to attack and defend these different nodes to destroy them, keep them alive, which will give players the ability to actually change the world in the game. 
and the node system in Ash of Creation is much more complicated than I just explained. There is so much more to it, but that is kind of an overview of the system. And then past that, you still have a ton of additional systems and content that you would expect from an MMO. You have open world, uninstanced dungeons, raids, world bosses, elite mobs, rare mobs. You have instance dungeons, instance raids. You have open world PvP with a karma system that will even have the possibility of bounty hunters hunting down the low karma players and the corrupted players. There will be sea combat where you can build ships, take them out in PvP, or fight PvE enemies out in the oceans. You'll be able to have your own player housing plots out in the world, and much more. And then there will also be more instance PvP outside of the open world, where you'll have battlegrounds, arenas, and you'll also have have the instance PvP fights that take place for attacking and defending the nodes. And like I said, this is the most ambitious game on the list by far, so doing an overview of it is much more difficult than the other games on this list, but I think what I've talked about will give you a decent idea and glimpse into what Ashes of Creation is trying to create. So that is my top five most anticipated MMOs coming in the near future, and if you were in read by the overview of any of these games, I'd recommend researching further into them. MMOs are incredibly complex games that you can't get a full idea of what they are just from an overview. And in my opinion, all five of these games are seeming to be on the road of becoming successful and well-liked MMOs. And like I said, I have an MMO channel that is focused on more long-term coverage of MMOs in general, including pretty much every MMO on this list. So make sure to go subscribe to that channel. It will be in the description and in the pinned comment. So subscribe to keep up with any of my uploads on this channel. Leave a like if you liked the video. Leave a comment down below what you guys think about the MMOs on this list. And thanks for watching.